Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to Halifax Waters 2020 Virtual Annual General Meeting. Uh, before we begin, Halifax Water would like to acknowledge that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This meeting is open to the public. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the AGM is taking place through GoToWebinar, an online video conference webinar platform. The webinar is being recorded and will be posted to Halifax Waters YouTube channel. The agenda and presentations for this meeting are posted to the Halifax Water website. Before we begin the items on the agenda, I have some general information for the benefit of those attending virtually. Following the presentations, there will be an opportunity for members of the public to ask questions of, Hal of Halifax Water staff members and members of the board through the raise hand function of GoToWebinar. We ask that any attendees wishing to speak wear headphones during their speaking time to prevent any audio feedback issues. All comments and questions should be respectful in nature. Any person using disrespectful or derogatory language will be asked to stop. If the disruption persists, the raise hand function will be muted by the webinar moderator. Um, we will now call the roll. Kathy, can you lead us through that, please? Thank you. I'm Kathy O'Toole, the General Manager of Halifax Water, and we're going to go through introductions with the Halifax Water Board and then with the Halifax Water Executive Team who are on the line today. You've already met Craig McMullen, who is our Board Chair, so we're going to go to Russell Walker. Perhaps we'll come back to Russell Walker. We'll move on to Councillor David Hensby. Good morning and welcome from beautiful Muscadabra Harbor, where we're hoping to have someday a central water supply as well. And Councillor Richard Zerowski, how are you on the line? Good to meet you, Kathy and Craig. And uh, I'm sitting in the bunker in Wedgwood which is my want these days and uh, yes we do have water we're lucky to have power though a crow created an outage this morning at 5 30 we just got power about half an hour ago well we're glad you're with us next is councillor stephen adams morning everyone <clears throat> and i'm uh, downtown halifax at city hall where we have water and board commissioner Ten. Ted Farquhar. Good morning, this is Ted Farquhar, logging in from Halifax. And Commissioner Colleen Rawlings. Good morning, everyone. Calling in from Halifax as well. And we'll go back to Councillor Russell Walker, who's also the vice chair of our board. Good morning, uh, Russell Walker, Vice Chair of the Board, uh, in the boardroom. We also have a member of our board, Brad Anguish, who's appointed by the municipality. I don't believe he's with us today, but Brad, if you are there, can you turn yourself on and introduce yourself? Okay, we'll move on. The members of the executive team, the first person I'd like to introduce themselves is Jamie Hannum. Good morning. I'm Jamie Hannum, Director of Engineering and Information Services. Thank you. And Heidi Shedler. Good morning, Heidi Shedler, General Counsel and Corporate Secretary to the Board. Louis de Montbrun. No microphone. Oh. Uh, Louis de Montbrun, I'm the Director of Corporate Services and CFO and the treasurer for the board. And Reed Campbell. 
Hi, I'm Reed Campbell, Director of Water Services. Sushil Arora. Good morning, I'm Sushil Arora. I'm Director of Wastewater and Stormwater Services. Kenda McKenzie. Good morning, I'm Kenda McKenzie, Director of Regulatory Services. Thank you. So these are the people who are present who will primarily be speaking to issues today. We also have a few other Halifax water staff who are subject matter experts in different areas listening in. If we need them, we will go to them to support us on some questions. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so we'll now call the meeting to order. Um, first item of business is uh, the minutes from last year's annual general meeting held on July 18th, 2019. Um, I'm, everybody has had a copy and has had a chance to review. Um, can I have a motion for acceptance, please? I tell more. Seconder. Commissioner Rawlings can second. And just Thank to be you. clear, sorry, my apologies, uh, Mr. Chair, that was uh, Commissioner Walker that uh, made the motion. Thank you very much, Heidi. Um, is there any discussion with regards to the minutes of last year's annual general meeting? Calling once, twice. Were there any errors or omissions? Sorry, go ahead. Just got some feedback, apparently. Um, and then we'll, then we'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or, or a contrary minded? Hearing none, motion carried. Um, and the minutes from last year's meeting are, are official. Um, so we'll move on in the agenda. Uh, and I believe the next thing we have is a strategic initiatives overview. Thank you. We're going to do an overview of the accomplishments from 1920, and then we're going to do a quick run through what our main strategic priorities are for the 2020-21 fiscal year. And 2019-20 was a good year for Halifax Water. We accomplished a lot of things, even though we had several challenges to deal with, including emergency sinkholes, a tropical storm, Hurricane Dorian, some rail disruptions that caused some uh, concerns with supply chain, and last but not least, COVID-19. Notwithstanding all of those challenges, we did accomplish most of our operational priorities, and we were able to deliver $94.3 million in capital projects. Some of the things we accomplished this year were the implementation of a new telephone system in the customer care center. We did that relatively late in the year and it's come in very helpful for us with respect to COVID-19 as not all of our customer care reps are now able to work from home. Secondly, uh, we did some work on our customer service strategy. That initiative is on pause though, to align with a customer portal, which will be introduced later this year. Our Customer Connect project, which was the installation of new AMI meters, is 98% complete, with 82,000 meters installed as of March 31st, 2020. Also, we've continued to roll out and enhance use of our computerized maintenance management system. We've planned for the next level of enhancements and projects are completed or underway. One of the priorities we had last year involved how we use technology and data analytics. It's an exciting time to be a water utility. There's a lot of new technology on the market and a lot of opportunities for artificial intelligence and machine learning. Some of the things we're looking at are piloting artificial intelligence, which would help us with optimizing water operations, pressure management and leak detection. We have selected the technology and will be piloting this year. And we also introduced ITRON analytics as a tool in 2019-20. 
that's a system that takes all of the meter readings that we're collecting through our new water meters and allows us to do some analytical work and proactive uh, response to issues which we wouldn't have been able to do in the past. Finally, we were going to select a new analytical tool for asset management that actually was deferred as a result of other higher project IT projects during the year, higher priorities. We had one significant IT project underway, which was to commence a project to replace our corporate enterprise resource planning system, ERP. We currently use SAP. We have issued an RFP, conducted it, contract is ready to be awarded, subject to us securing the necessary capital approvals. And we do have a project underway to select a new system for regulatory reporting. Wet weather management remains to be an important initiative for the utility. Uh, we had some objectives last year that were delayed, and that's as a result of a delay of receiving a capital approval from the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board. We had planned to do a significant sewer separation project on Romans and Federal Avenue, and that capital approval was delayed, so that project has moved to this fiscal year. Resource recovery, we had planned to initiate an RFP for biosolids processing. We have completed an internal study of available technologies and the RFP is under development and issuance is imminent. With respect to our environmental management systems, we had set an ambitious goal to get ISO designation in 1920 for all of the wastewater treatment facilities and to develop a plan for corporate-wide expansion of EMS. We have completed the EMS audits for the Halifax, Mill Cove, and Eastern Passage wastewater treatment facilities. Registration audits will occur later this year. We also have a three-year plan for corporate EMS expansion, which will commence April 1, 2021. Energy management initiatives, we set a target to achieve $1 million in investments and to achieve 3% energy savings and accompanying greenhouse gas emission reductions. That target was achieved. We have a Cogswell District Energy System where we had set a target to get a URB ruling to give us clarity on what that business structure would look like on a go forward basis, whether it be regulated or unregulated. And that decision was uh, issued by the URB in May and it will be a regulated business. We have a water quality master plan, and one of the initiatives under that this year was a tailored collaboration project with the Water Research Foundation on lake recovery. That project is almost complete, and it will be completed later this year. The data that will result from that will give us a decision support tool and better information to help inform our future wastewater, excuse me, water treatment plant upgrades. Halifax Water has an ambitious lead service line replacement program. And one of our goals this year was to explore ways to ensure that we're maximizing opportunities to replace lead service lines in conjunction with the municipal street renewals. The initial target set by the Halifax Water Board for lead service line replacements on the private side was to have them done by the year 2050. In November this year, our board approved a more aggressive target to get them done by 2039. And an enhanced lead service line program is now before the Nova Scotia Utility Review Board, and we hope it will be approved within the next couple of months. With respect to safety and security, uh, safety of our employees, safety of our customers and the public is very important to us. We have six corporate balance scorecard targets around safety, and we're really proud that all of our safety related targets for this year were achieved, including a new organizational indicator regarding our internal safety audit scores. Wastewater research was an important initiative in 2019-20. Halifax Water has a successful water research program with Dalhousie University, and we had planned to build on that with the introduction of a wastewater research program. 
we proceeded through discussions with Dalhousie, a new NSERC application was submitted, and we have a program that is now set up and approved and is beginning to be implemented this year. One of the things that we're very excited about is that that wastewater research program has been included to include uh, research on COVID-19. We're participating with many other Canadian municipalities also through the Canadian Water Network on initiatives to track COVID-19 through wastewater. The next three objectives that you can see on this slide around asset management, uh, integrated resource plan and enterprise risk management were all completed. They're very significant initiatives. With respect to asset management, we completed an infrastructure master plan which is a 30-year view of the infrastructure that will be required. We've set up three asset management implementation teams and our work on expanding our asset management approach continues this year. We also completed an integrated resource plan and filed it with the Halifax Water Board and with the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board. Jamie will be speaking a little bit about our future capital requirements, and those are all driven by the integrated resource plan. With respect to enterprise risk management, we developed a formal ERM system, and our Halifax Water Board spent some time setting risk appetite and tolerance levels in 2019-20. We completed a five-year update of the regional development charge. We filed that with the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board. We expect a decision within the next two months. And last but not least, some of our people priorities. We had planned to do some work on talent management. We have rolled out some online training tools this year. We have introduced some different types of meetings and supports for supervisors, and we have developed career paths for our employees, and we have not rolled them out yet. That will occur later this year. Finally, a payroll project. We have a project to replace our payroll system and implement an employee self-serve portal. This will go live uh, imminently within the next two weeks. And one of the benefits of the payroll project is reduction of a lot of manual processes and some operating savings, which will help us with our bottom line. So I'm gonna go through the highlights for our current year business plan. And I've got this transitional slide to provide a little bit of an overview that the Halifax Water Board did approve an updated five-year business plan this year. And the updated five-year business plan reflects some strategic priorities in the following areas that are listed on the slide and reflects the fact that we need to deliver $708.5 million in planned capital spending over the next five years. Next slide. Turning first to our current year initiatives in water services, we'll be continuing with the water research program with Dalhousie University, and the focus is on lake recovery and on geosmin. We also have some important and plant upgrades that are planned with respect to Lake Major and we'll be initiating water treatment plant upgrades with respect to Pockwalk, the J.D. Klein treatment plant. We have a goal to assure distribution system water quality during water main breaks. We have implemented some new uh, SOPs and it's just continuing to ensure that those SOPs are enforced. We've implemented, um, as I mentioned, a, a process to get approval for an enhanced lead service line replacement program. If that is approved by the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board, we'll be implementing the enhanced program this year. And finally, under our existing program, we'll be completing lead service line renewals in conjunction with municipal street renewals. We also have an important initiative with respect to dam safety. A dam safety review was conducted. The audit should be back soon, and that will help inform uh, our capital and operational requirements around dam safety for the next few years. Turning to wa wastewater services, we'll be completing the first year of wastewater research and evaluating the success. 
we've got an important initiative to confirm the plan for future Halifax Harbour Solutions plant upgrades grades to meet some 2040 environmental compliance requirements. We have an initiative underway to continue rolling forward with our wet management program, and we will be completing the project I mentioned earlier that was deferred, the Romans uh, sewer separation project. And we're also going to be exploring some different ways to help our customers um, with private side INI reduction. Finally, we're working on uh, odor issues, developing a level of service standard for odor and strategy to achieve it. Halifax Water is fortunate right now in that we do not receive a great number of odor complaints, but when we do receive odor complaints from customers, um, it's often something that homeowners are very uh, concerned and emotional about as it impacts the enjoyment of their property. So we're taking that issue seriously and we are working on a standard for odor. The last two bullets on this slide are really ongoing business. Each year we interface with the municipality on flooding issues around stormwater and we are also going to be evaluating success of doing large cross culvert work in-house. Each year we do a number of culvert replacements and uh, what we're doing with the larger cross culverts is based on a project that was done in 1920, we've realized there are some projects we can do in-house potentially, which uh, results in some financial savings to the utility. Engineering and information services will have a busy year. Uh, pending URB acceptance of the IRP, that will be helping inform the capital planning activities that they're responsible for. Engineering and Information Services is working on optimizing capital project delivery and improving the percentage of annual capital budget spent. There'll be a report coming to the Halifax Water Board in September to report on progress in that regard. We're working on approvals for an East Central uh, Depot consolidation. We have purchased land and we will be uh, proceeding with the design for that new depot. We're supporting the municipality on the Cogswell area redevelopment project. And as mentioned earlier, we have some water, water supply plant upgrades, JD Klein and Lake Major, that are gonna be two, two of the main capital projects we'll be undertaking in the span of this five-year business plan. Delivery of key IT projects is ongoing. This year, the focus is on the payroll project, the customer portal, and the ERP system. We're conducting a GIS update this year, which is uh, uh, obtaining new satellite imagery uh, to support our stormwater billing system. And finally, engineering and information services will be implementing risk-based condition assessment, improved decision-making tools for asset management. Regulatory Services has made the submission to the Utility and Review Board for an RDC. If that is approved by the URB, then regulatory services will be leading the implementation of the changes to that charge. Regulatory services will be commencing corporate implementation of environmental management systems. As uh, discussed previously, we've got a target to start that on April 1st. Maintaining regulatory compliance and enhancing the re regulatory compliance activities is a main focus this year and ensuring the large water plants have Nova Scotia environment approvals and permission to operate. Regulatory Services also plans to implement a new permitting system for engineering approvals. That's a project that's being in, done in conjunction with the municipality. And finally, uh, we'll be evaluating ISO 45001 safety certification and completing a physical security audit. Uh, during 2020-21. Uh, there is some risk that that initiative may be impacted by COVID-19. Physical security audits and bringing contractors into facilities is uh, something we'll be assessing whether we want to proceed with or not in light of the enhanced risk. And finally, we'll be having some discussion of the point of sale disclosures with the Nova Scotia uh, Real Estate Commission. 
we want to make sure that property owners and people buying properties are aware of any of the water, wastewater, stormwater related uh, infrastructure risks or issues with respect to their properties they're purchasing. Corporate services is working on customer experience. The highlight will that will be the introduction of a customer portal and finding ways to utilize all of the new AMI data we're collecting to provide more proactive customer service. Billing is considering a transition of our billing process to the municipality's print shop, and we're looking at converting to monthly billing for the majority of our customers. That will provide some enhanced convenience for setting dates for billing and better management of personal household budgets. We're looking at enhancing the linkages between the customer care center and operations through integration of our systems, particularly the um, computerized maintenance management system. And we're looking at the operational and financial benefits of our new ERP. If our ERP proceeds, it needs to be supported by a solid business case that is going to demonstrate the benefits of that system to our utility and our rate base. Finally, Corporate Services has been leading updated funding strategies. We had an application filed for water and wastewater rates. And as you may be aware, we have, uh, in light of COVID-19, put forward revisions to that. Halifax Water is not seeking any increases to water rates at this time. We're going to hold the water rates for the next two years. And wastewater rates will not change in 1920. We're proposing a small adjustment to the wastewater rate, April 1, 2021. We have proposed an adjusted regional development charge. We're awaiting for approval of that. We had put forward some requests for other um, revisions to various fees and charges. We've also asked the Nova Scotia Utility Review Board to defer those changes in respect of uh, COVID-19 and recognizing that some of our customers may have difficulty with uh, staying on top of their bills at the moment. Finally, we're always looking to improve and we're looking at ways we can improve the management and uh, reporting coming to the Halifax Water Board. With respect to administration, risk management is still a priority and moving forward with the next phases of that. The Coswell, Cogswell District Energy System project will proceed dependent upon the timing of the Cogswell redevelopment, which is being led by the municipality. In September, we'll be bringing an updated governance manual to the Halifax Water Board. We're working on training all supervisors and developing skills for leadership in providing feedback. That's in response to uh, an employee survey indicator that indicated our employees would like to receive more frequency of feedback. Finally, we're hoping to train all employees this year on psychological health and safety. Psychological health and safety is just as important as physical health and safety, and I think it's become even more important in light of the new stresses caused by COVID-19. Finally, we're looking to enhance our customer communications this year. We had planned to focus on the water and wastewater rate increases, as those will not be occurring. Uh, a lot of our customer communication focus is going to be around stormwater service and educating customers with respect to stormwater service. And this uh, one-page overview of our objectives for this year is available on our website. It gives a nice snapshot of some of the things we have planned for 2021. Thank you. Thanks, Kathy. Um, we're going to save all questions uh, to, for the question and answer forum. So uh, that being said, we're going to move on to a presentation on major capital initiatives for 2020-21. Mr. Hannum. Thank you, Chair McMullen and Kathy. And good morning once again, Jamie Hannum, Director of Engineering and Information Services. Pleased to provide a little information on our annual major capital initiatives. So this is entitled Path to Sustainability, and I think this is an important note. We, we get to a, a next slide where it does show a 30-year, $4 billion investment by the utility, and I wanna make the important point that this $4 million doesn't signal 
a, a, a deficiency or a gap in our infrastructure as much as it points to the necessity to sustain a level of investment over 30 years to ensure the long-term integrity of our infrastructure. So our identification of a $4 billion investment is a positive long-term sustainability signal uh, versus a signal that we have deficiencies in our infrastructure. Although there are some deficiencies, this is more about promoting a positive go-forward plan of sustainability. So just at a little bit of a detail level, um, as a regulated utility, Halifax Water um, does recover its capital and operating costs in conformance with the Public Utilities Act of Nova Scotia. And one of those focuses is to promote the capital spend to enhance that level of service to our customer. Again, all about sustainability. Um, we, we have aging infrastructure, but we manage that infrastructure and ensure it's in good condition, but must continue to invest in that infrastructure as it does meet the end of its useful life. But we also need to facilitate growth and be aware of changing compliance requirements. In 2012, Halifax Water completed its first integrated resource plan, which gave a preliminary snapshot of the long-term capital investment. We committed to a five-year review of that document. In November of 2019, this board endorsed the Enhanced Integrated Resource Plan. And a couple of images shown here in this slide show that there is a projected $4 billion investment required to ensure that long-term integrity of our infrastructure to support our core services. But this, this image breaks it down into two systems. Um, first on the left, it shows the level of investment in our three core asset classes. That's water, wastewater, and stormwater. And these investment levels are really a bit of a reflection on the value of these systems. Our wastewater system is our most complicated system, giving a lot of, uh, given that there's a lot of wastewater treatment plants, a lot of pumping stations, a lot of mechanical electrical equipment in conjunction with the many kilometers of, uh, of collection system. So it's our largest asset class. So it's our largest reinvestment requirement. Conversely, stormwater is our smallest as it's mostly local pipes, routing water to local water courses and the water infrastructure is in between. So this shows the split of the $4 billion among the asset classes. Conversely, on the, on the other side of the screen, it's about our drivers. We make capital investments for three primary reasons. The first is asset renewal to ensure the long-term integrity of our existing infrastructure. When we build new in infrastructure, we're already planning for its end of life, whether it's in 50 years, 70 years, or 100 years, and need to make that continue investment in assets as assets wear out. However, in conjunction with that, we're also mindful that Halifax is a growing city, and we need to continue to make investments in water, wastewater, and stormwater infrastructure to meet the capacity demands of that continued growth and this shows a plus $500 million investment in, in growth capacity. But also on compliance, we're in a very dynamic environmental world where both in the water and wastewater side, there's continuing evolutions and challenges to keep our water and wastewater effluent in compliance, and there's a series of long-term investments to, um, to manage that. We have developed uh, with the information of a 30-year IRP, our annual capital budget program, which is in effect from the 1st of April to the end of March 2021. And we show here this year an approximate $96 million investment in infrastructure that's broken down by $38 million in wastewater, $9 million in stormwater, and close to $50 million in water infrastructure. In the next few slides, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an overview of some of the uh, major projects that are taking place this year. So within the water category, um, I've noted five specific projects. The first is a um, start of a major new transmission main along the corridor between Dartmouth, between the uh, kind of water supply side of Dartmouth and the Burnside Industrial Park. There's existing transmission main in that area, but the new transmission main is to provide reliability and resiliency to this, these, um, the existing Burnside area and the important customers we have in that area. Also, we continue to invest annually and significantly and strategically in all of the water distribution mains that are on each and every street within the service area of the municipality. And we have aggressive water main renewal program once again this year. And approximately 80 or 90% of that program is done 
cost effectively in conjunction with HRM streets programs when they're rebuilding a street or repaving a street. Um, we'll work in conjunction with them to do the water main renewal. Kathy spoke uh, at, at a bit of length on our lead service line replacement program. There's significant capital money in the budget to continue our new aggressive lead service line replacement program, and we're looking forward to some enhanced uh, opportunities with regulatory approvals to advance that program. Probably our most uh, critical, largest dollar value and important long-term program this year is to start to reinvest in the two large water supply plants, one at the J.D. Klein on Pockwalk Lake and the Lake Major Water Supply plant that services Dartmouth. We are in a detailed design mode this year and we'll be moving to um, construction phase this year and into the next four or five years on major upgrades to both of those facilities to both ensure that the facilities have capacity, the integrity, and the process capability to deal with current and changing water quality requirements in the lakes and the needs of our customers. Um, so these are large capital investments we're making over the coming years and we're, we're into detailed design phase this year. And lastly, uh, folks will see quickly on the horizon in Bedford South, a new water reservoir being constructed to provide um, balancing and emergency storage for the significant new development in the Bedford South and uh, Bedford West areas. With respect to wastewater, um, a list of the major projects this year is we continue to make significant annual investment in our wastewater collection systems. One of the most cost-effective programs we currently have is trenchless rehabilitation of the, of the sewer pipes, where we're able to insert a structural liner in the sewer pipe by going in the manholes from manhole to manhole and, and curing a liner inside the pipe. Um, to reinstate a full um, structural integrity and a 70 year life cycle of that system without doing any excavation of the street, without doing any disturbance to the community. Uh, in fact, we've been going through many, many communities in Halifax and basically we're on a street, in and out of a street the same day or in two days with a renewed sewer line with no excavation, disturbance, dust or noise. Very cost effective program that's continuing this year. Um, as we mentioned on the water main renewal program, when HRM is doing street work, we also take advantage of that to make any necessary upgrades to our wastewater collection systems, whether it's spot repairs, full replacements of pipe, installations of catch basins, replacement of manholes, et cetera. We will do that cost effectively in conjunction with HRM streets program. The Halifax water wastewater system has approximately 170 wastewater pump stations that move wastewater around the collection system um, as we work wastewater from the homes to the treatment plants. As such, this large asset class of mechanical electrical equipment requires a lot of uh, maintenance and upgrade. This year, we are working on a replacement of a critical wastewater pump station on the Autoport Main Road in Eastern Passage. Another annual program is the replacement of wastewater laterals. Halifax Water owns the wastewater lateral from the property line to the mains uh, for each and every customer, and we continue to both work in a proactive uh, means when there's street work going on and a reactive means when a customer has a problem with their lateral to replace our portion of the lateral. In addition, um, we are working on a large sewer separation program on the peninsula. This is an area where we're taking some of our combined sewers and creating separate um, storm sewers and sanitary sewers in an effort to get stormwater out of the wastewater system and this serves two primary methods. If we can reduce the amount of stormwater getting into our wastewater system, that provides capacity for growth. We talked about the need for capacity for growth earlier, but it also reduces the amount of flow getting to our treatment plants and through our pump stations and is a more cost-effective way to run that expensive infrastructure. On the stormwater side, once again we integrate stormwater collection projects with HRM streets program and replace any infrastructure required during streets program. We have an aggressive annual program where we are reviewing and replacing driveway culverts and cross culverts on roads as they approach end of life um, in their asset renewal program. And, and an interesting and, and aggressive program we're also working on is the upgrade of the Ellenvale run retaining wall replacement system. We have about a six phase program to enhance the 
the structure and the capacity of the full Ellenvale run system that runs through the center of Dartmouth. We've completed three full phases. We have a phase four plan this year, and in the next couple of years, we'll be completing phase five and six to complete that program. On the corporate side, and these are projects that benefit all of our asset classes, um, I've highlighted a few projects. One is that we're in year three of an aggressive IT strategic plan implementation. Kathy highlighted many of the projects that got completed last year and many of the important projects that are on, uh, on table for this year. So we continue to implement those important IT strategic plans. We continue to do an aggressive corporate flow monitoring program. Within our wastewater system, one of our principles is if we can't measure the flow and know what's going on in the system, it's very difficult to manage the system. So we have a, a series of uh, areas where we monitor the actual wastewater flow so that we can judge the condition of the system, the current activity, and also it helps provide baseline information for capital projects and post-construction um, measurement of results of capital projects. As Kathy mentioned, we're in the design phase of a new East Central Operations Facility. We purchased the land last year and we're now looking for um, an opportunity to do the detailed design of a project that will allow us to consolidate four existing facilities in the East and Central area into one cost-effective single facility that will service going into the future. Our general uh, timeline is for design services this year and into construction services in 21 and 22 to complete that facility. And just a note of an, of an ongoing annual program is our continual uh, investment in fleet to ensure that we have the optimal fleet necessary to complete our operation and maintenance activities. This provides a summary of those projects I talked about to uh, aggregate those all into to one location. So I thank you and I look forward to any future questions at the end of the presentation. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Um, so now we'll move on to a presentation of the year-end financial results for 2019-20. Uh, Louis. Hello, Louis DeMopperin. I uh, just wanted to run through, sorry, just one second. Sorry, my apologies. Uh, just wanted to run through some of the key highlights from our year-end financial results. Uh, I, they're essentially in three parts. We'll run through the financial statements and some of the key issues related to those. Uh, a brief explanation of some of the changes between our budgeted results and our actual results. And then a, a short bit of information to support some of the financial aspects that both Kathy and Jamie uh, we're talking to in their presentation. So one of the key highlights for us is we have been given a clean audit opinion by our auditors, Grant Thornton. Uh, those were approved at our board meeting in July, in June, sorry, at the end of June. Uh, one of the key things for us on the financial side is we are required to report our results on two different uh, accounting basis. Uh, the main financial statements are provided under the international financial reporting standards. Uh, those are required as part of our uh, the, the public reporting and are used in the HRM consolidated financial statements. We're also required by the Nova Scotia Utility and Review Board to provide financial results based on the accounting reporting handbook for which is the, the method that we use for our budgets and our rate setting. On our IFRS statements, one of the key changes that were made this year were uh, was that we adopted a new standard, Standard 16, related to leases. So those changes have been incorporated, incorporated into our financial results. Uh, this slide is the key, the little snapshot of our our assets, so our current assets are approximately $92 million. A significant piece of those are our receivables from our customers. Um, and one of the key increases was a receivables from HRM, primarily related to cost sharing. 
Uh, on the non-current asset side, that's our utility plant and service. Uh, so the, ma the, the major assets that uh, Jamie and Kathy referenced are accounted for in this section. Uh, in total, we have approximately $1.2 billion as our net book value of those assets. So in total, we increased our assets by about $94 million, uh, and we recorded about $45 million in amortization. On our liability side, uh, under the current assets, uh, the significant component there are our payables, which increased over the year by about $5 million related primarily to the capital projects we've referenced several times. Uh, we also have our, our current portion of our long-term debt and the current portion of our deferred contributed capital. Uh, on the liability side and long-term liabilities, uh, key items there are long-term debt, uh, the portion that's payable over the next 10 years, the deferred contributed capital, which represents approximately 880,000, sorry, $880 million of that number. Um, so in, to combine those are the key items in our long-term assets. Uh, this slide is a, as a snapshot of our uh, our revenues uh, based on the IFRS reporting. Uh, the, sort of the key items that we wanted to identify was that our overall consumption as a utility uh, went down by approximately 0.22%. Uh, we did have an adjustment on our stormwater revenue, and then the septage revenue uh, was also down this year, approximately 400,000. We did see wage rate increases uh, increase our uh, our operating expenditures, uh, we did see increased capital costs, um, and our depreciation was uh, ahead of last year. The other comprehensive earnings account uh, increases primarily related to the liabilities related to our pension plan and other long-term benefits. As I mentioned at the beginning, we provide financial reporting under two bases. So under the IFRS, we had a surplus of $20.9 million. Uh, what you have on this slide are the key differences between the IFRS reporting that generated the surplus and under UARB accounting, we have a deficit of about 1.6 million. What the, the differences are primarily related to non-cash items. So anything like pe pension expenses that are not cash any of the adjustments related to the deferred contributed capital account are, are plus and minus into the, the equation. Uh, but probably the most significant item is that the, the debt principal is considered an expense under UARB accounting, but is not an expense under IFRS. So that essentially generates the most significant change between the two. So under the UARB accounting, we've so provided summary information uh, related to our revenues. So our revenues don't change under either accounting method. Our expenditures do change uh, based on some of the items I just flagged. Uh, the other revenues, uh, the financial revenues are adjusted mostly related to uh, the, the amortization of the deferred contributed capital account and the debt principal payments being required. So this slide sh shows um, our revenues, or sorry, our, our net surplus deficit uh, by service. So our three key services, water, wastewater, stormwater are presented here uh, with the increases year over year. And then we also provide here some additional information on the portion of our our surplus and deficit that's generated by what is regulated by the utility and review board and what are unregulated activities. So you can see that difference here. Uh, so one of the key issues for us is how do we generate revenue? So on this slide, we show the, the allocation of the $137.7 million that we generated revenue, um, the portion can some coming from uh, consumption rates, uh, the portion related to the base charge rates, 
Uh, we also have uh, sort of the significant pieces related to public and private fire protection. So we provided a sort of a slightly different snapshot that shows where those revenues are generated from. So one of the other areas I wanted to touch on is just the comparison between our, our actual results compared to our budget. So we had started the year with a budget of approximately $8.4 million deficit. We ended the year with about a $1.6 million deficit. So we had an improved position of approximately 6.8. Um, we did see on the water services side, the chemical costs were, were lower. We did see some transfers of uh, staffing between the various groups that affected the water services side. Uh, we also had debt service costs, which I'll, I'll touch on later on in the presentation. In total, they were about $2.1 million uh, lower than we had budgeted. So that's part of the significant changes that we see here. The wastewater side, essentially uh, very, very close to budget. Um, one of the things that we did see is uh, some of the uh, the costs related to stormwater and wastewater were allocated uh, based on where our staff provided the services. So we'll see some of that transfer between those two groups uh, in our reporting. So this slide sort of summarizes some of the key sort of non-operational pieces. Uh, most of our expense sides were on or under budget. Uh, the administration and pension side was down uh, below budget by about $1.5 million, mostly related to uh, about $800,000 reduction as our our pension plan based on our actuarial valuation uh, gen came in with a surplus position. So that uh, resulted in the savings there. Depreciation was a fairly significant number for Halifax Water, uh, came in very close to budget. As I mentioned earlier, the debt servicing costs in total about $2.1 million below budget. Uh, and then we, this, this portion represents the $5.1 million we give to HRM as a dividend or in as a, as part of the grant in lieu of taxes that we provide. So Kathy has touched on uh, and Jamie have touched on sort of the, the capital portion of what we're doing going forward. Uh, we do have a capital budget of about $96.5 million. One of the things that we continue to monitor very, very closely are our cash balances and our receivables uh, in terms of the impact that uh, some of the assistance we're providing to our customers may have on those accounts. Um, our cash balances continue to be very healthy, uh, and we're pleased to report that our customers are continuing to uh, to pay their water bills. So that's a very important part for us. Um, we have since year end uh, received our debt, our first initial debt payment from HRM, uh, sorry, from Municipal Finance Corporation. Uh, and we have paid our principal payments related to approximately $6.8 million. So in summary, we have a clean audit opinion. Uh, our financial position continues to be strong. Um, we do have and uh, continue to monitor the consumption and uh, our our bank balances and our receivables from customers. As Kathy talked about, we did uh, modify our rate application as a result of COVID-19. Um, and as she mentioned, we are requesting no increase in our water rates in our test years 2021 and 2122. We're also uh, not requesting an increase in our wastewater rates for 2021. Uh, we are requesting a rate increase for 21-22 on the wastewater side, uh, but our proposed increase is below what our original proposal was put forward. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks Louis. Um, so we'll now uh, move to the question and answer forum. Um, Heidi is who is moderating uh, because I don't have the hands function. I'm going to be moderating that and uh, I can see if there are any hands up. And also we have Nicole who's able to read out any questions if we have any questions in the chat function. 
right now I'm looking at the attendee list and I do not see any hands up. Um, and I believe there are also no chats. Can you confirm that is correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, as we don't have any questions or I, chat I questions I from do. the members of the public, I'm going to go to the board. <laughs> Um, Councillor Hensby, I believe that was your voice. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, I have a quick question for you. Um, in regards to the status of Lake Major Water Dam, uh, finished completion of construction, one to anticipate the, the commissioning of it and what timeline is that? And also in today's news, there's talk about an algae bloom in Lake Major, which I find a little strange because there's very few lawns in the area where any fertilizers or species runoff could occur so could you have some clarification because that being the news today and this being annual general meeting and lake major has been highlighted during the meeting could i have clarification on the dam plus his bloom uh, story thank you so jamie hannum will speak to the uh, question for the lake major dam and then i'm going to ask reed campbell to come on screen and speak to the uh, algae at lake major all right, thank you, Kathy. Um, as I believe I understand the question, I can seek some clarity if I'm missing it. The Lake Major Dam project is essentially complete. The project included the removal of the the existing dam, and the dam is operational. So maybe I could just seek a little bit of clarification from the board member on the exact question relative to any outstanding work. Well, I just want to note, A, has it been fully commissioned? Has, it, has the contractor signed it off and passed it over? Is it fully in the hands of the Halifax Water? And also, I believe there's a house still on the property by the dam that I believe was planned to be demolished. I was wondering the status of when that might be. Plus, we've also learned recently uh, the passing of the last living uh, member of the Ernst family. And their home is also just across the water from the dam or beside the dam as well. And I might anticipate that that too was to be demolished at some date in the future. So, uh, the the uh, so I just want to know okay. when is the dam so-called officially ours? Has it been commissioned and signed off by the contractor? Okay, thank you for that clarification. Yes, the project is is officially complete. Um, Halifax Water owns and operates the dam. It's been commissioned. Um, as part of the contract, there is a warranty period that's outside of the acceptance where there's a, where we warranty the work, where the contractor warranties the work, and we continue to monitor that warranty period for any uh, issues that may arise during the warranty period. But outside of that, we have taken ownership of the dam. The dam has been commissioned and is operational. Um, with respect to some of the adjacent properties and the future changes there, I will um, defer that question over to Reed Campbell, our Director of Water Services, to if he's able to give us an update on the status of those few homes and what the future holds for those. Okay. There we go. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, thank you for the question, Councillor Hensby. Um, the uh, home that Halifax Water has owned for some time, uh, we will likely be demolishing that and completing the landscaping uh, in the remainder of the calendar year, more likely towards the fall. And uh, we're working closely with the Ernst family as they um, uh, deal with that family home there. But uh, Halifax Waters owned the property for some time and we're working with them to complete that transition. Uh, just further to Jamie, um, as, as far as commissioning and us operating the dam, that is complete. Um, we have a little bit of work to do just in terms of calibrating and fine tuning our operation of the fish weir, how we control flows downstream uh, with Department of Fisheries and Oceans. And we have some signage and things we're required to put up for public safety as people boating and swimming approach the dam. So that work we expect to be completed through the fall as well. Kathy, if that's okay, and, and Chair, I can go on to the algae question that Councillor Hensby had. So thank you for that question. We did release a press release today. I think to the first part of your question about algae, you're right, the watershed is controlled. Uh, typically, blue-green algae is often related to things like fertilizers and uh, nutrient sources like that. However, it's not exclusively to that. Uh, and we've been talking with the board and the public for the last few years about the phenomenon of lake recovery. There is algae 
in the lake. Um, and and uh, the level of nutrients is growing, not necessarily because of uh, things like fertilizers and septic systems, but just because of this general phenomenon of lake recovery, and that's a treatment challenge that we have. So um, I think the hot, dry weather this year and some temperature changes have created a bloom that's causing some treatment challenges at the moment, but that's being managed by our staff. But with your permission, uh, because we issued the press release this morning uh, for a couple reasons, and I'd like to just spend a minute talking about that because I will get some news coverage and I would like to uh, just explain that to the members of the board. Um, we issued the press release, but what we've detected is a very specific species of blue-green algae in the raw water for Lake Major. Um, this may become apparent to customers off and on in the form of taste and odor, which is generally taste and odor causing compounds or non harmful, but also in some rare instances, they can produce a, a class of topic, a class of compound called microcystins. Uh, there's a very few number of microcystins that can be toxic in drinking water. And there's, there's protocols for dealing with those things. Uh, the specific algae that we've discovered is not one that's a known villain in the drinking water instance. So microcystin is a problem for drinking water is fairly rare, but it does occur from time to time in North America. So the algae that we've detected is not one of the known villains in the drinking water business, but it's one that scientifically is known is capable at certain times of producing uh, microcystin LR, which is the primary compound that we're concerned about. So we've done recent testing. Uh, microcystin LR is non-detect. And there's a broad class of microcystin systems. We also know that at the current time, microcystins in general are not being produced. So as a drinking water issue today, we're very confident that um, we don't have any issues. We've got a variety of uh, screening programs in place. In real time, we're monitoring just the general level of algae activity in the lake. We also have the ability to detect whether uh, algae are producing microcystins generally and we're sending samples at a regular basis to labs for microcystin LR. When we first detected the uh, blue-green algae earlier this week, we immediately had discussions with Nova Scotia Environment of the Medical Officer of Health. Uh, those are going on on a daily basis. They're very much in tune and we're following Health Canada protocols as far as how we're monitoring the, um, the algae occurrence. Well, thank you yeah, very much. If and I could uh, just add to that, the uh, press release that was issued this morning was one that was um, reviewed with and supported by Nova Scotia Environment and the um, public health. Uh, mm. They did have an opportunity to see that. And one of the reasons we did feel that although the water quality is fine right now and the water is safe that we should issue a press release is to start educating the public with respect to blue green algae and some of the different um, issues that it may pose for water treatment. So this is just a, a starting point in terms of a, a conversation and the source water quality is a significant risk that Halifax Water has recognized in our enterprise risk management. And as Reed mentioned, lake recovery is a phenomenon that the utility has been working on for many years and it's going to inform those capital projects for water treatment plant upgrades that we spoke of earlier and having the utility position to deal with these challenges around changing source water quality conditions is going to contribute to probably some increase in those capital project costs above what's currently now in our five-year business plan so we're starting an education process both with the board and the public around what's going on with the lakes and what's going on with water treatment Thank you very much for that. Uh, I just know that there are a number of uh, local residents uh, that are very interested in this particular project, this Lake Major Dam. So just a couple of years ago, we had the local state of emergency with the potential uh, failure of the dam at that time, the old uh, Ernst Mill Dam, where places were evacuated and people were advised to be, uh, be careful. Well, any of those, some of those residents would like to see the finished product now. 
No, well, they're, they're they're safe and safe in their homes along the, along the river shore there. So I just want to make sure that there's an opportunity in the future. Perhaps we get an open house once this COVID passes. Perhaps we're gonna have a, a nice um, picnic on the dam, I guess you could say, or perhaps a fishing derby on the property. It's a beautiful spot to go fishing. So just want to put that out there as a future event uh, to recognize the, the the new dam. And I'm looking forward uh, to the uh, Lake Major water plant upgrades. So that should be a significant project as well. Thank you. So we still have no uh, hands raised and no chat questions. So are there any questions from other members of the board? Hearing and seeing none, I'm going to turn it back over to the chair. All right, ladies, <clears throat> excuse me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, hearing no further questions, um, we are officially at the end of the AGM. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I would, do want to take this opportunity uh, on uh, on behalf of the board of directors um, to congratulate uh, the Halifax water team on coming through uh, what could only be described as an incredibly challenging year. Um, I kid Kathy on a regular basis. Actually, before the meeting started, we came to the conclusion that Kathy's a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. Um, <laughs> she's had some challenges, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, it's been a fantastic year, uh, despite some major challenges, and it's a credit to the team uh, at Halifax Water for the excellent work that they've done and the work that they do on behalf of the stakeholder and on behalf of the, uh, of the residents of the municipality. So thank you very much. Um, so in conclusion, uh, I do not believe I require a motion to close an annual general meeting. So in that particular case, uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we hope to see you again next year um, and stay safe. Thank you. Sorry, my apologies, Mr. Chair. You do require a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> no move, Madam Chair, or Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> and <help the> person. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> We will call the meeting closed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.